כל הבשר חציר, וכל חסתו כציץ השדה, יבש חציר נובל ציץ כי רוח אדוני נשבה בו. אכן חציר העם, יבש חציר נבל ציץ ודבר אלוהינו יקום לעולם. A voice says, cry out. But I ask, what shall I cry? All flesh is like grass. All of its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades when a wind from God blows upon it. Surely, therefore, people are like grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God endures forever. לדוד מזמור לאדוני הארץ ומלואה תבל ויושבבה כי הוא על ימים יסדה ועל נהרות יכונניה. מי יעלה בהר אדוני ומי יקום במקום קדשו. וכי כפיים ובר לבב אשר לא נשא לשב נפשי ולא נשבע למרמה. The earth is the Lord's with all of its fullness. The world is the Lord's with all of its inhabitants. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord, who may stand in the holy place. She who has clean hands and a pure heart, she will receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of deliverance. Everyone who knows and who knew Eileen knew how stylish she was, how fashionable she was. She dressed well. She presented herself well when she worked part-time. In addition to time in the drugstore, she worked in retail clothing in a boutique store. She had a sense of style. Everyone said she had a wonderful sense of style. And I, I think her secret agenda was to get everyone else to improve their style, including all of you. Now, I agree that she had style, and I agree that she taught you a certain sense of style. But I want you to know style is not only in clothing. And style is not only in personal appearance. I think she taught you another kind of style, which I think is the most important kind of style. So for instance, Lori, when you went to college, your mother taught you how to be resilient, how to get up and stand up for yourself. Now that resilience, that was also your mother's style. It was basic to your mother's style. Missy, when you went away, she motivated you to get out there and make friends, or when you had a bad day at work, she taught you how to get past it and rise up to see another day. That's what I also call style. She taught you all that family is the most important thing in your life. Your mom and your dad both taught you that a family has to be in it together and has to stand with each other. That's what I call style. That was your style. Because that was her style. You know what else was her style? To be fair. She taught you fairness. She taught you that your word is everything, that you don't lie, that you take responsibility in life, and that you need to be proactive in your life. What you all received from your mother's example was to engage in a situation, not to let circumstances force your hand that you need to help to shape those circumstances. You know what I call that? I call that style. That is style. And your mom had it. And that kind of style is called character. And that's true style. And I'm glad you've inherited all the types of style from your mom. But don't ever forget your style doesn't end, end with the clothing. Honestly, what I see, I see a family that's very engaging and very articulate and loyal, whose values are very clear, who are fiercely proud of their family legacy. And all of that didn't come from nowhere. It came from somewhere, from the home that your mom and your dad created for you and the examples that they were to you. Your mom was street smart. She was extroverted. She was very much loved. She had lifelong friends, girlfriends from when she was quite young. A fun and a sweet person, a great lady. Social, she was also an avid reader. But through all the socializing and activities, she knew to do the right thing. And she would tell you the importance of making the right phone call, of writing a thank you note. She knew the importance of health and exercise. She was the food monitor, evidently, for uh, some of you. But that was her style also. I want you to know, important influences in our lives usually have a moral style and a spiritual style. Eileen had that and lived that way every day. 
She had been close to her own parents, became extremely close to her mom after her dad passed away and her mother was alone. I want to offer our condolences, of course, to Marilyn and to Mark. And I know you remember your brother Michael, who you lost a few years ago and was a blow to the entire family. Uh, to Lori and to David and to Missy, your mom gave you the tools that would help you in being independent in your lives. David, I know you said you had your moments with your mom, pushing back a little bit, but I know she also felt that you were very independent, and I know that you felt that she really loved that in you. And all of this, Howard, from a young lady who was a few years younger than you, that when you met, at least according to the story you tell me, that you took her out on a date, she was asked if she want a cocktail, and she asked for a fruit cocktail. But it worked because you were very devoted to each other and very devoted to the kind of life you were building for your family. You trusted each other. You worked and provided. You knew she was creating a wonderful home and an active home and a loving home. Eileen was clearly a go-to person for the kids, for their carpooling, their activities, their sports, what they were doing in school. She'd have dinner ready for you with the whole family on many occasions. Or when you were working late, she'd certainly want to make sure you had that at whatever time you came in. Your kids have memories of Eileen waiting at the window during stormy weather, waiting to make sure you came home safe and sound. Your worlds were wrapped up in each other, and you built that world together, and you believed in it together. Your parents' chemistry was unmistakable. They had their Saturday night dates. They would hold hands. They'd want their time together. You knew their love and dedication to you. You had family time but you also respected their time alone together. And when it came to Jewish holidays, your mother emphasized them, brought people together, and David, for your bar mitzvah, she wanted that. Knowing that your parents are behind you does so much for the confidence of a child. And the confidence that the parents build in the child never really goes away. I see that in all of you, a certain security about who you are. You knew and you know today that your parents have always been behind you and supportive of you but you also knew that they had certain expectations of you to be good human beings. And it led you to be the resourceful people that you are. It was love, but it was also educating you to be better people. When you talk about your vacations, you found a good spot to just hang out, but also there was also an educational twist to many of your times together as a family. I know your mother loved being a grandmother. Eileen loved being a grandmother. She would take her grandkids out, would love vacations where you would all be together as a family. The last part of Eileen's style was she taught you to kvell. She loved to kvell at her family. She was proud of her family. And I know that you will all continue to kvell about your wife, about your mother, about your sister, about your grandmother. You'll continue to all kvell for many years to come. She lived with a good name. She died with a good name. I want to call on uh, Lori and David and Missy and however arrangement you're coming up sure. oh, the grandkids okay grandchildren first Josh and Maddie and Zoe she had impeccable taste majority of our time we spent in her closet she'd been picking out our wedding dresses since we were five those of you who really know know Zoe and I used to run around her house in these fake wedding dresses she bought us so many years ago number two she's beautiful on the inside as much as she is beautiful on the outside we'll miss her smile her sense of humor and her glowing face as I'm sure everyone in the family can tell you she always cared about the way we looked and I think we all get our great taste from her and number three, she had an incredible love for her grandchildren. What mattered to her most was being surrounded by all of us. We will never forget the snack cabinet and candy jars filled with lifesavers, 
I will never forget every sporting event she came to, every homecoming and prom picture, and everything in between. And while we know she loved each and every one of us, we know she loved Zach more. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Our Nana meant the world to us, and it will be hard to continue life without her. So for now, we'll carry on her memories forever. Hello. My name is Josh. For those of you who don't know me, um, as I thought about my Nana over the past couple days and reflected on what I was going to say today, I realized there was one thing uh, really special about my relationship with my Nana that I wanted to share with you all here today. Uh, my Nana and I had different interests and personalities. I'm not one to talk about fashion. And my Nana wasn't someone to talk about stocks or business ideas like I would with my papa. Uh, but we still spent a lot of time together. Instead of long, drawn-out conversations, we'd find time to quietly enjoy each other's company. It might be sitting next to each other when I'd go over to watch Jeopardy, holding hands at family holidays, or dancing at bar bat mitzvahs or weddings. It's rare to find these people in your life that not a word needs to be said to feel their love to be content and comfortable in their company. I always felt my Nana's love at these times and knew she could feel mine. I truly cherish these moments with my Nana and still do. I love my Nana very much and will miss her dearly, but feel happy that I can always think back on these memories I had with her. the youngest of my siblings, Missy, for those of you who may not know me or remember me. So many beautiful memories of a lifetime and way too many to share today, yet wish we had more time to celebrate so much more. A few of my favorite begin at childhood. I remember any time I was sick, my mom laying in bed with me and like us Drexlers, she would fall asleep with me into the night. My mom had the best girlfriends forever and ever, and I will never forget her talking for hours on the phone with them, laughing out loud, till she would start crying, or maybe pee in her pants. Another Drexler thing. I know for certain, Mom and Aunt Vicki, are laughing together forever again. Throughout life, Mom always had great friend advice. She always knew how to get me through those teenage years. When I went to college, I'll never forget, I went to school with no girlfriends, and it was hard and scary not knowing anyone. I happened to mention to my mom on the old-fashioned telephone, about these two girls I saw on the floor below me that looked nice. She made me literally hang up the phone and march down there, her words exactly, and introduce myself to them, which I did. And one of the girls who was from New York, all her life's father, went to high school with my mom. We became friends all of college. As all of you know, my mom had the best style, which benefited me greatly as she was unselfish with me borrowing anything from clothes, jewelry, shoes, and purses, and even to this day, I loved her style and borrowed her stuff. Shopping at our favorite stores will never be the same again without her by my side. Both of my parents have the love of theater, and I remember going to see Annie in a course, in course line, and amongst many more, our whole family has theater tickets and go because of them. Another love was traveling the world, which they did, and brought me and our entire family on so many beautiful vacations from Acapulco, California, Florida, 
Caribbean cruise, Alaskan cruise, New York girls shopping trips, Hawaii, and Israel to name a few. I learned to love to read great books because of my mom. I will miss talking about our great reads. Mom was a great confidant, one you could trust with all your secrets. She made sure we celebrated holidays and birthdays as a family, which we will carry on. I can't imagine her not being at my kids' weddings, or even more sad that she'll not need any great-grandchildren, as that would have been her biggest joy in life today. May all know of Grandma Nana forever, as we will keep your memory alive. How do you continue to live life fully when you lose such an important person in one's life? Well, I found that our family is a strong one, along with my best friends who are like family, who have been incredible to me, calling, texting, bringing food, stopping over, talking, walks, or just sitting by my side doing nothing. David, and my beautiful children, Zoe, Zara, and Zachary. That is how I imagine I will carry on and continue to live life through my mom's memory and continue to make her proud. Lastly, Mom, you were married for 60 beautiful years in January to Dad, and we know that one of your fears was leaving him. But we promise we'll take make sure that dad is okay and taken care of. Dad raised the bar to the vows for better or worse while taking care of you. Dad did everything in his power to help you beat this horrific disease to the bitter end. Mom, I will miss you more than you will know and I love you more.
Eileen and Vicki were on the plane to Chicago that same weekend. A stamp of, of approval was received and her love for Bob has never faltered. It may even be a toss up as to who is her favorite, me or Bob. I have al always cherished the relationship she had with my boys and their spouses. Her love for them was, was never ending and I know they felt that too. We always joke that I have seemed to inherit that I have inherited all of her less positive traits. So what if everything makes me nauseous or I can't take medications or smells? Bunions, oh well. They never, the, need, the ever need to clean and organize, that's on mom. On the, on the positive side, all my morals and values, strength, and an attempt at being stylish came from mom as well. So this takes me back to that tree. I've learned to accept those bad apples and embrace the good ones that make me the person that I am. I am proud to say that this apple has not fallen from her tree. Mirror, mirror on the wall, I am my mother after all. I love you, Mom, and will miss you dearly. Two hard acts to follow. <laughs> so I'll be brief, I hope. <coughs> First, I want to thank everybody um, for being here. The room is full. My heart is, is warm because of it. I um, especially want to thank, uh, you know, I know a lot of people here have lost loved ones, and uh, this is the first time we've lost a parent, and I can't tell you uh, the number of texts, emails, calls, visits, communications from so many hundreds, and I feel like all of them were so real and sincere, and it was just unbelievable. And, and continues. I also want to thank dearly, um, Lori mentioned all of us and the, 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 the kids and their spouses, but I especially want to thank my sister Missy, my wife Amy, and in particular Lori for everything she did for my mother the last several months because it was uh, not an easy job and uh, we couldn't have done it without you. So now on to... Uh, to Eileen, uh, the person who literally brought me into this world. You don't really think about that much, but, but for her, I wouldn't even be here. And I do think about that all the time, uh, and I'm thankful for that. I also realize, though, that just bringing me into the world is not even close to the job, and the job really is what you do after that. So I thought I would take a, just a few minutes to talk about what makes Eileen so great. Uh, and I really didn't fully appreciate or even know how great she was until I sat down to put all of this together. Um, and a lot of it has been said, so I'll probably be repeating some. Some of it's different. I found my mom to be one of the most loyal people I ever knew. Uh, she was obviously very loyal to her husband and to us and to the grandchildren, but she was so loyal to her friends. I mean, they were like, um, and they're all here today, I'm sure. And um, I mean, they were like uh, bonded, whether it was Aunt Vicky or all the others. Um, you know, we call, they called my mom, the kids, Aunt Eileen. I always thought they were truly our family. I didn't realize that they were just very, very good friends, most of whom were friends with my mom from childhood. And they remained friends that close up until uh, the last sad moments. I always thought my mom was very um, wise and perceptive, you know, and, and there's so many examples of that, which I won't uh, by any means bore everybody with or at least go through in detail. I just thought I'd name a few uh, that I thought of in particular. One, when I was uh, younger, my mother, um, when we were sad or unhappy, I remember her telling me uh, on several occasions to fake being happy, fake smiling, just fake it, and eventually you will be happy and you will smile, and she was absolutely right. The other one was uh, you know, a little bit of a longer story. When I graduated law school, I um, was already living in an apartment, and I was moving out to a new one, and I don't know if George Post is here, but I was going to live with him. He had 
just lost his mother, so he was living at home taking care of her, so it wasn't easy for him to leave. But we uh, agreed that we would leave on September 1st, 1989. And, um, and we found an apartment. He, he gave me one rule, just one rule. He will not live in Gates Mills Towers, he told me, no matter what. <laughs> Which was fine, I, mean, I guess. Um, <laughs> so I looked at Shaker Square. I found an apartment. Um, and, um, and paid the deposit, didn't sign the lease yet, thankfully. And then uh, I came to learn that there was a murder in the building. And, I was, oh, well. and then I found out there was a murder in the unit. <laughs> and <I'm> like, <laughs> so so I, I thought, okay, I could live with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I called George and he said, no, I will not live with that. <laughs> And by the way, I'm at home anyway, so it's not that big of a deal for me. My apartment, I had to be out in like two days. So I hung up the phone, and my mom was in the kitchen. I was at her house, and I told her what's going on, and she said, call Gates Mills Towers. And I'm like, that's the only thing George told me not to do. And she goes, call Gates Mills Towers. So I called them, and lo and behold, even though they have 600 units, there was only one left. <laughs> I still question that. And then, and then I, and, um, and then I told her, you know, it was there. And she goes, now call George. And I go, he already, the bottom line is I called George and he like, it's low, as though a little bird in his ear said, say yes. He just instantly said yes, forgetting his own rule. And, but for my mom, I would have never even thought to do that and probably went to met my wife, Amy, because I met her the first day I moved in. And then, um, and then the last one is um, uh, more spiritual. Uh, I was once talking to my mom. My mom believed in God. She truly believed in God. She wasn't all that religious in terms of going to temple on a regular basis at all. Uh, but she did believe in God. And one time we were talking, her and I, this is long before she was ill. And she just told me, as a matter of fact, I believe in God. It's not even a question. And then she asked me if I did. And I said, I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, and then, you know, give all the philosophy about it and this. And I said, but I do, you know, I'm very thankful. And I say it all the time. And I even pray and for people and then she looked at me and she's like well then you do believe in God and that was the end of it <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and she was right <laughs> um, my mom and I know you've heard this before but she was an amazing grandmother to all of her grandchildren Alec, Cody, Josh, Maddie, Zoe, Zara and her favorite Zach <laughs> and they all have a special relationship with her and I see it in each one of them all the time. I've seen it. And, um, and I know that you will all cherish her for the rest of your lives, and, and you should, because you've had great memories. And you also have another grandparent who's still here, and that's uh, Big H, who we all know and love. And, and you guys have a great relationship with him, too. And I, would, uh, I know you guys are all so busy as you're getting older, and I'm so impressed with what you guys are all doing, truly. I, I really am. Try to remember to spend time with him, talk to him, because as much as it will be meaningful to him, it'll be so meaningful to you. So, some a little bit of advice. Um, so, Eileen is the person I've known the longest in my entire life. My memories are deep and long, and I remember specific details going back 50 years, and those of you who know me know that's true about not just my mom, but almost everything. And I won't bore you guys with all that or tell them if anybody wants stories over the next two days, just come see me. But I will say that my personal relationship with her um, has, um, it grew stronger. When I was a boy, I tested her. I wasn't the easiest, I'm sure, and have been told over and over. <laughs> but as I became a young adult, our relationship got better and it continued to improve all the way till the end. Um, she was a, a, a dear friend to me and um, and a confidant. I thought, I think somebody said she kept secrets. I hadn't even thought about that, but that's true. She never revealed a secret if you asked her not to. Um, I can't remember the last time my mom and I got in a fight. And you know, you guys know the Drexlers, that's hard to imagine. And we really never did as an adult. That's how well we got along and I cherish that and I'll remember that forever. And then finally, the last thing I want to say about my mom, and then I'll, I'll get off the stage. Um, you know, cancer is just such an awful disease, and it's touched everybody in this room. I don't even have to go around and look to know that it has. And, and you know, and I, and I th think about, I thought about it a lot before my mom even, unfortunately, was diagnosed, and how, what it truly meant to fight cancer. And, I, and I've seen a lot of people go through it, and I always thought that it's, you know, people 
say they fight. They do. But to truly fight is a hard, hard thing. It's not easy. And even if you can't do it, it's no criticism. I'm not sure I will if it ever comes to me. It's a very hard thing to do, emotionally and physically. And my mother was in, diagnosed five years ago. And, um, and I thought about that, and I think that she was one of the best fighters of it. She didn't talk about it. She was very private. She didn't, obviously, nobody likes it. Um, but she fought so hard because she had a number of surgeries, a number of different treatments that really affected her negatively. And yet, she wanted to live so bad. She did not want to die till the bitter end, till her last breath. And, uh, and I admire that. She really was a true, true fighter. And that, you know, will be with me for the rest of my life. So, Mom, I will miss you. I will cherish you in the memories. We'll take great care of Dad, because I know that's what you would want. And finally, always know that I love you and always will. Please rise for the memorial prayer. Chamim shochen bam romim hametze menucha nechona tachat kan fe hashchina bemalo kedoshim utehorim kazor rakia masirim et nishmat chayisara bat yitzchak zev leya shal shal chalo lama. Began Eden to Hemenu Chata, Anabal Harachamim Hasti Reha, Beseter Kanafecha Leolamim, Utsror Bitzrechemit Nishmata, Adonai Hunachalata, Betanoach Bishaloma Mishkava, Benomar Amen. May we remember all of the worthy and the righteous deeds that she performed in the land of the living. May her soul be bound up in the bonds of eternal life. May she rest in peace, and we all say amen. Let's be seated, everyone. We want to offer our condolences now to the family, to Howard, to Lori and Bob, David and Amy, Melissa and David, Alec and Ari, Cody and Mackenzie, Josh and Madeline, Zoe, Zara, Zachary, Marilyn and Larry, Mark and Jean. We want to uh, note that the service is going to now move into the processional that will uh, uh, lead us to the burial portion of the service. Burial portion of the service will be at Mount Olive Cemetery, and we'll be leaving by processional in just a few moments. Uh, following the burial, the family will receive friends for the Shiva visitation. That is in Solon. The address is 39810 Alsace Court in Solon. Again. 39810 Alsace Court in Solon. That's for the Shiva visitation. That will be today following services until 4 p.m. And then again tonight, 7 to 9 p.m. Tomorrow, 1 to 4 p.m. and 7 to 9 p.m. So following the burial portion of the service today, one can begin to visit the family in Solon until 4 p.m. And we're going to have a uh, service, a minion service, at 3 p.m. today. So, so the visitations today until 4 with a service at 3 p.m. And then again tonight, 7 to 9 p.m. Tomorrow, 1 to 4 and 7 to 9. Please remain in your seats for another moment or two. The pallbearers should now come forward. 